I have a saying that everybody wants to be a bartender. And I use that uh, when I'm bartending. I like to get my, my guest interaction uh, either behind my bar or perhaps on the other side of the bar. But honestly, I can answer that question saying uh, I was about 15, 16 years old working in the school cafeteria in my high school. And I was behind the wood, and people were coming to me, and I was dealing with cash, and I was turning around, and chips were flying, and chocolate bars, and hot dogs. And uh, they always wanted me in the cafeteria because I was had the ability to kind of, I guess, you know, work the crowd, or not work the crowd, but sell and, and take the money. And the transactions really came easy to me, and I didn't have any difficulties with that. And honestly, thereafter, I remember thinking to myself, that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. I was good at it. And uh, when I moved to the big city, I, I, I took a couple bartending classes. And the uh, day after I turned 19, there I was. Well, this will be an interesting story for sure, but what made you want to be in this industry? I think probably, like a lot of people, circumstance. I mean, I'd come out of high school. I wasn't ready to go to university. managed to get into the industry. And as it turned out, uh, I was a natural for it. So uh, as the university got farther and farther off and my father evicting me got closer and closer, uh, all of a sudden, it was paying my bills, and luckily I was able to make it uh, work for me. It paid for my schooling as well, but yet I still sit here as a bartender, so. Excellent. Taking Scott's course, both courses, his uh, beginner level and his mastery level, has improved uh, my service all, all over. He puts it right down on paper for you. He puts it right out on videos for you. He puts it in his seminars right out there for you. Plain Jane, this is how it is. And then he asks you to go from there. I met Scott through uh, this Toronto Expo thing I went to in Toronto. And uh, we went out to the Indian Motorcycle Club. It was uh, it's a pretty cool bar in, in uh, Toronto. And we had limousines driving us around. There was like 15 limousines. And Scott ended up in our limo. So it was like the end of the night, he doesn't drink hardly ever, right? So he had maybe like two beers, pff, he's done. So it's even better, you know what I mean? You can make fun of him. So he was uh, a little bit toasty. And uh, all I remember basically is that I gave him the hardest time. Like this is before I even hardly knew him. And it was like, uh, ooh, Mr. Big Bartender throwing bottles in the air, Mr. Highfalutin writing a book, making videos, ooh, big shooter, you know, like this. And I, rat I mean, I felt sorry for him. like. Well, no, I didn't. I didn't feel sorry for him at all, actually. But I just razzed him. And we're in a limousine downtown Toronto, and it was just, it was wonderful to be able to razz somebody. Why well, I looked up to him, but you know what I mean? To break the level, and, the, and you know, he's just, he's human, you know? Yeah, and that's the greatest thing. He's a real person, and that really, really helped to, uh, you know, be a part of his world and help spread it, too, you know, like the love and... So, I don't think I really have any big, big screw-up stories. I've never done anything terribly wrong other than <laughs> screw up stories I always um, like to turn around into a positive and I guess probably one that comes to mind would be um, a power outage It was on my birthday um, and I actually wasn't um, behind the bar or managing at the time it was my birthday and we we're all having a good time and there was a massive power outage. it was a Friday night the entire block uh, of the bars were out and basically what happened was we uh, we just started selling salads um, off the, out of the kitchen and let candles everywhere and, uh, and everybody kind of got supportive in that idea and, and all the guests stayed and, and continued to spend and we all went manual and everybody had calculators and I'll never forget everybody. But it was a, a night that I'll never forget. I mean, it was obviously my birthday and I was having a good time, but everybody else had a really good time too. So we, we took what could have been a dismal situation with a power outage, obviously. It's pretty difficult to run a bar, but they managed to still pour the alcohol and uh, went and got some canned pop and things like this to, to make the night go well. So. And we had, a, we had a good night that night, I remember, specifically, so. Uh, let me think here. Uh, screw up stories. Nope. Can't Tapping think of any. kegs or... Uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah, once I was, uh, once I was changing a keg in, uh, in a keg room that was uh, in the parking lot, three stories down, and I uh, tried to, tried to uh, lift a keg down from the third, three high, and these are big kegs, and uh, felt totally pinned me. Pin me. Oh no, I have a better screw up story. <laughs> I, was, uh, <laughs> I was opening up this uh, cooler, this walk-in cooler, big, large cooler, and uh, I bent over to pick up a case of beer and I knocked myself out <laughs> on the handle, on the steel handle of the, uh, of the cooler door. So well, that was right. great. <laughs> and we've, everyone, everyone was looking for him and everyone looked over down. at the cooler and all you could see is, was his legs sticking out of the cooler door. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my God, it's Tony okay. That. And it was, yeah, still out like a light. Sleeping. <laughs> yeah. People who care enough about what they do to think about how to do it better and then actually go out and do something about it. Wow, that was perfect. One, one more for safety. Except for what I miss. Keep saying, what do you want? Oh, at the very worst, we can. <laughs> good, uh, whether, good observation. Hey, whether you are a goal. Okay. Okay, here we go. Stand by. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Stand by. Settling. And. Whether you're watching this video alone or with a group, it's not really designed to be watched in one sitting. It's not a movie. So stop it once in a while and rewind it and make sure you catch all the ideas. Our goal is to stimulate thoughts and discussions. Ideas, philosophies, concepts. I'm totally lost. <laughs> I'm just picking big words out of the air. Um, but when customers come in and the, the sheer slack jaw shock they see as they're being handed their drink, like, how did he do that? That's what I think is, you know. Also, not only how did he do it, but how come no one else puts that much effort into, even though it might be a short time frame, mm -hmm. so much effort and enthusiasm and generosity has gone into such a simple thing as serving a drink. Oh yeah. And people really feel wanted to the point where they will go overseas yeah. and send us a postcard after being here for one night. Yeah. I got 19 bars in this street and you can get the best rum and coke in town. But I'll guarantee you, you get a better one here just because of the effort, the, con the, the show, and the genuine want to serve you that drink. It makes it taste better here than anywhere else in the city. Uh, what would you say to a bar manager or an owner who's skeptical of this style of bar service? This style of bar service, I think that's uh, misleading. I mean, it makes it sound like it's just a show. Uh, what it is, is it's, uh, it's on top of the effect. It's, uh, it's, it's all, uh, you get, it's very effective. Everybody's still getting served. They just happen to enjoy that little wait a little longer. I mean, the fact that you can pick up a glass and fill it with ice, or you could throw that glass to your hand, Literally, throwing it to your hand is going to be faster. It's going to be more entertaining. The customer is, in, is actually getting better service. And uh, if uh, there's occasion to have a, a bit more of a, uh, a flipping show put on, you know, very few bartenders uh, work alone. There's always uh, another person around that's going to be taking the heat off that guy for that one minute. And that'll put on a bit of a show. The customers like it. The other people uh, are still getting everything. I would say that it's, uh, in it, it, it happens in addition to already good service. I feel like I'm still a rookie, actually. Yeah, I get practical jokes played on me all the time. One particular one is uh, my boss comes and says, quickly, quickly, it's an emergency. I need you to go, go to the maintenance shop and go get me a long wait. Quick, 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 the kegs are exploding. The kegs are exploding. Go get me the long wait. So I'm running over there to the maintenance shop. I'm like, I need the long wait. He says, Just wait a minute. So I'm waiting there for about 15 minutes. Can, can I get that long wait? It's an emergency. Just wait a minute. Another 15 minutes. I need the long wait. Just wait a minute. Another 15 minutes, and then it clues in. I'm here for a long wait. Uh, Rookie stories. Rookie stories. Of that you've put someone through or that something's been put through uh, to you? There, there's always the, the, the typical pranks that, you know, some, some guy 19, you know, super eager. Love the eager guys. They're great fun to work with, and man, you can make them do amazing things. <laughs> Sending someone down the block for the Corona, corona Lime Extractor, wonderful. <laughs> That's a magic thing, especially if someone in the next bar down the street catches on and sends them to the next bar. Oh man, we made a guy go about four blocks once. It was great. In front of you. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Okay, we're ready. Am I looking at the camera to answer the questions? You're looking at me. But if you, if you can look at the camera and feel natural about it, I doubt it. Do you know what I mean? I can. Well, I don't know. Like it's just because you're going to be chatting, there's a lot of stuff where you're telling jokes, and you need that interaction, so... Yeah, that's look why you're here, Max. I got the, I got the number. We're tight here. That does. You know, we've all sent the bar porter to get a bucket of uh, O2 or, you know, margarita mix. Um, but one that kind of stands out to mind that was, looking back on, was pretty funny. I was managing a bar at the time, uh, and we had uh, a couple thousand feet of draft line, and I was, my job was to clean the draft lines once a week. I never really done it before. I just thought, ah, I can do this, no problem. And the bar coolers were about two stories below us. Um, and I went down. Um, I had been upstairs and loose and cleaned the lines upstairs on the draft towers, and then and putting the faucets back 
I didn't tighten them with the wrench because, again, I didn't take a, a course or no one really showed me properly how to do this. I should have taken some lessons. So I didn't tighten them completely, went downstairs, tapped all the kegs, and when the pressure came through, basically when I, as I was coming up the stairs, taking my time, the bartender comes right down, shut the beer taps off, shut the beer taps off. I went and shut them off, and uh, after coming upstairs, the entire bar was flooded in beer, and it was basically what I was told was a massive sprinkler system, basically, of about <laughs> six beer handles, and it showed beer, and it was in Whistler, and all these regulars were putting their mouths over the beer handles, because I hadn't tightened these things up, so it looked like one big fountain display of, of uh, barley, hops, malt, and yeast, I guess, upstairs in my bar. Well, me and Scott don't really work together that much, and even in the early days, we never really worked together. But uh, he was very dangerous in the beginning. <laughs> I've heard a lot of dangerous stories. Please. And uh, a danger could be like him trying a new trick or expecting someone to be as alert as he is and not being as alert and being hit or whatnot. People not understanding that you always got to tell someone that you're behind someone if you don't want to get hit. And especially with the amount of stuff that flies around when he is working, it's, uh, it's like being at war or something like that. <laughs> you got to really pay attention. But okay. other than that, not really. All right. <laughs> Thus the no practicing at work rule came in later in the yeah. Bar Smart course. Fair enough. <laughs> I don't mean to put any pressure on you, um, but honestly, this is, I think is one of the most uh, important questions of this entire series. Um, why do you want to be exceptional at what you do in this industry? Or I guess in any industry. My answer to that would be, why wouldn't I? Um, that's like entering a game and not wanting to win, not having the desire to win. Uh, that's like cashing in a $100 bill and not wanting your $100 in, in change. It's just that doesn't even enter the uh, equation for me. I mean, why wouldn't you want to be the best that you can be, whether it be uh, bartending, uh, a lawyer, a doctor, a teacher, cleaning toilets? I mean, why wouldn't you want to be the best toilet cleaner you could be? <laughs> that didn't go on. I don't want to clean toilets. <laughs> <laughs> can we do that one again? Yeah, you betcha. We should anyway. We should stop. I was on a, I can you was... shut the little wee ones up? I was doing well there. It's, uh, it's been around now for, oh, geez, a few years for sure. And I was never the big flair person, but I had a good head for it. I was research and development for Scott. I mean, uh, you had all these guys practicing up their moves, and I was smart enough to figure out that, well, if something that's done that way, maybe it can be done the other way. And I'd go home and I'd practice for two days to be able to pull it off one time. Come in, okay, guys, look, you know, take, take it easy on me. And then all of a sudden, 15 minutes later, everybody uh, with all the natural hands are doing it. But uh, I've, I've been sort of like a quiet consultant uh, in the background. Um, I've seen some competitions uh, on tape. Scott's got some old things recorded, and he's let me see them a couple of times. Uh, I think the competitions really gains the confidence that you need to be up in front of a crowd. You have a crowd in a competition, you've got a set routine, and it's all about different rules like spilling is a, is a very one. You spill, it's like 40% of your mark, right? So you have to do it all professionally, accurately. So it builds your accuracy, your confidence, and your ability to work well in front of a big crowd, not freezing out. That's my belief. Yeah, one that comes to mind was just recently, a couple of years ago, actually. And um, it was a bartending competition, and all these bartenders were going at it. These young guys, they had gone through, I guess, Scott's course or had learned how to how to flip bottles and do everything else. And one of the bartender's girlfriends came up to me about three quarters of the way through the competition and her boyfriend wasn't up yet. And she says to me, well, you know, how's it going? What, what, what do you think his chances are winning? And I, and I turned and I said, you know what? These last five guys I've seen are all jugglers. I haven't seen a bartender yet. And that was, I think, really nailed it because um, he came on next and he demonstrated uh, performance bartending isn't just about juggling a bottle. And he kind of incorporated everything, because all these guys were doing were juggling, and I hadn't seen a bartender yet. That one kind of sticks out in my mind. My answer was, uh, Ryan, this is Scott Young. You'll be working with him tonight. And I went, Scott, eh? I went, Scott, you got a lighter? He's like, yeah, yeah, I got a lighter. I went, give it to me. Like, okay, so he pulls out his lighter, and you know, one of these 
cheesy little pink Bic things or whatever. I get holds it up and I take it, I look at it and I go, throw it across the office. You threw it out of the office. Out of the office, okay. <laughs> that was a better shot than I remember. But uh, so I throw it out of the office and Scott's like, what's going on? And Vance is doing much the same. And I pull out one of our uh, brass Roxy Zippo lighters and give it a flick and say, yeah, I got the Roxy, we do things a little more class than most places. You gotta have this if you're gonna work in here. Handed them that and then we proceeded to go upstairs and start our first shift together. Our first shift of about six years of working together. And uh, of course, you know, four minutes into the shift, Scotty's on top of the bar spinning things and throwing things at me. And I'm just like, oh my, oh my goodness, what's going on here? <laughs> I'm trying to talk to the girl. You're throwing things at me. Uh, all turned out quite well in the end, of course. But yeah, so there's, there's a rock, rookie story for you. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Gotcha. Nine. Have you ever received any outstanding service? From you? Never. But <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> I, I find. Outstanding service can sometimes be from people who don't even, you know, if you get technical, it's not perfect service or it's, you know, something may not be right, but people will go out of their way to fix it or are very sincere about the fact that they care about fixing or making things right for you. Um, someone, you know, if a drink is mixed up, something, I've always taken the utmost care to make that person walk away from me with a smile on their face and be darn sure that they're going to come back again. And it's such an, it's an easy thing to do, to, to fix a situation. But, I mean, I, I've been in a lot of situations where it hasn't been fixed, and where all it takes is a bit of acknowledgement. And if it, someone would have acknowledged the situation, it would have been great. But, yeah, it's, it's the eye-to-eye -eye contact and caring. I think the funniest thing was that uh, when we first started at the Roxy, there was uh, <coughs> myself and two of my buddies. And we really didn't know anything. Uh, we came from a uh, restaurant background. None of us really had a full-time bartending gig. And we didn't know a lot of the stuff. A lot of the shooters, a lot of the drinks, we just made them up as we went along or whatnot. And, and the big joke was that if you didn't know what something was as a shooter, it was Buka Bailey's. It was layered, not layered, shaken, stirred, upside down, cinnamon, anything you can find just to make it different. And every shooter was Buka Bailey's, no matter what anyone asked for. Uh, have you got any uh, rookie experiences, either yourself or things you may have? No, I pranks? have a good rookie experience. <laughs> uh, again, I was working up at Apex Alpine, a great resort up in the Okanagan. And uh, I was bartending. It was my first or second shift. And they sent me out to go check the, uh, the I want to call it the fridge where we keep our beer. But we don't, it wasn't. It was outside in the snow and it was a heater that kept the room at a proper temperature for the beer. So instead of a cooler we had the heater going and uh, we had kegs stacked up three high. It was a little shack like uh, it would be in your house if you stored your lawnmower. And uh, I opened the door, I went in there, I tried to pull a keg off the tried to pull a keg off the top row <laughs> and toppled <laughs> six kegs <laughs> onto me. And no one came to look for me <laughs> for 45 minutes. Oh, no. I w it was because it was outside. I'm shouting. I'm like, ah, please. My legs, I don't know, if, honest to God, if anything was broken because I couldn't get out. There was so much weight on me with these full kegs of beer. And uh, I got the manager comes storming out angry. What are you? Oh, my God. Somebody call an ambulance. And I was just lied flat out with my arms sticking out of the cooler. It was bad. It was really, really bad. As, as a little side note, perhaps I should add in that once I had, you know, gone past the bartending level and become a manager, as you are now, although not quite as good as you, I did the, uh, well, intelligent thing of locking myself in a cooler. <laughs> That's why they got a new push button thing on the bottom, isn't it? <laughs> no, the handle came out when I was closing the door and it felt, I saw it fall and I, I had that overlapping period of time where even as my hand is closing the door, I went, I'm going to lock myself in here. Whack. <laughs> 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 and so, so I, I, I spent a fair bit of time planning my situation. I tried to crawl out through the uh, vegetable section in the kitchen and couldn't get out, so eventually I had to turn off all of the beer tabs on the draft until finally someone came to figure out, figure out what exactly had when happened I, uh, to the draft. When I first started with Earl's, they locked me in the cooler <laughs> and I pissed Man. them off because I ate about nine desserts. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, this has been a long time in the making, okay? 
<laughs> Anyways, I'm sorry. Back to our <laughs> regularly scheduled program. <laughs> Um, are there any stories about Bar Smart or Scott you can think of uh, as a friend or as an employee? Or as well, the thing about Scott is, is that uh, uh, bad stories don't generally stick to him. I mean, he doesn't, he's not a real screw-up. I mean, however... Teflon John. Well, yeah, he's a, he's a real nice cat who, uh, who will go out of his way to help you. And that's where he starts getting himself in trouble. I mean, I myself have uh, atomized two of his vehicles. Actually, <laughs> one of them I vaporized because it just disappeared. And the other one uh, was, you ever see like a car crusher? I, I did that. <laughs> so, and, you know, I would feel bad, but I'm not the only guy. I mean, there's four or five people walking around out there, you know, who run him over in motorboats or, <laughs> you know, set his uh, vehicle ablaze. Excellent. Well, I've, I've seen a lot and been asked to participate in a, a lot of things, but really haven't because there hasn't been anything of quality. And that's why I'm doing uh, this, because I think it's the, the best uh, product out there, being Bar Smart. And if someone wants to, uh, to have a good start, I think this is a great start for them. Or even if it's not starting, it's a good addition to what you know. Awesome. Gotcha. Uh, what is the most difficult situation that you have ever had to deal with? Hmm, most difficult situation in Europe. And it can't include anyone you work with. No, just kidding. <laughs> <sighs> that makes it tough. Um, no, it can. I think some difficult situations follow us certain types of guys or a certain individual or whatnot. I don't think weirdness really follows me. I think fun follows me, but I don't <laughs> think weirdness does. <laughs> Try to stay away from weirdness. <laughs> what was the most rewarding experience you've ever had while you were working? Um, you know, I've been around a long time, and I've seen a lot of kids come up uh, through, you know, maybe they're a cook or, or a busboy or something that manages to squeeze into the day porting position or the night porting. And I got a couple of guys that uh, I work with presently who've made it up to bartending over the course of a few years, and they're excellent, uh, excellent gents. And uh, not, not so long ago, they'd come up to me pulled me aside and said, we wanted to thank you, you know, thanks for getting us in and thanks for giving us, uh, you know, all the instruction. And then there's also the point where you just leave them be, right, you know, you can't teach them everything, but it uh, kind of made me proud. It's sort of like, uh, you know, the, the next the generation. Yep. Uh, actually, my most embarrassing moment was uh, working at Earl's. This, uh, this table ordered a bottle of champagne and I had never opened a bottle of wine or champagne before. Ordered the champagne bottle, asked the bartenders if they could give me a hand and they just kind of said, open it. And I said, fine. So I went over to the table, opened the champagne, the cork flew off, hit, hit another table, champagne started flowing out of the bottle. So I put my thumb over the bottle, walked away from the table, gave the bottle to the bartenders, told them what to do with the bottle. <laughs> and said, uh, you guys are paying for that. Give me another bottle of champagne and show me how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Table wasn't impressed. No kidding. But after we bought them the bottle of champagne, they were pretty happy. Actually, I was actually uh, doing, uh, I was working for Scott with Bar Smart, and I was doing a Vancouver trade show. And it was uh, the first show of the thing. It was the first time that Scott actually, like, let me, you know, watch me flip, you know, while I was, you know, wearing one of these shirts. And uh, there wasn't a big crowd, but still I was, you know, pretty nervous. And uh, I was sort of getting in the flow, and I was shaking martini. And I went to throw it behind my back. And as I catched it, the, the, the shaker glass came off, and, and it spilt, and it actually broke on top of the bar and sort of went out towards the crowd. And uh, it was pretty bad. I thought I was going to be fired, but I'm still here. So it couldn't have been that bad. But it was pretty scary. Scott just sort of did one of these. It's okay to make mistakes. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, do you have any big screw-up stories that you know of that you've done, which I would believe, or that other people around you have done on your behalf because of you? No, just kidding. Um, we met. No, oh, we <laughs> screw-up story <laughs> showed up. Uh, oh yeah, no, it's it's a, a long and distinguished list of, of screw-ups that uh, a lot of the time I'd like to blame on Scott. Uh, I'm not so certain that it can actually be that way, but. 
as far as my journals go, it, it's mostly because of Scott. Um, <laughs> no, nothing that's you know an insurmountable insurmountable problem that I couldn't you know overcome by a buying someone a shooter or not which, working with Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I tried that. I can never quite shake him. <laughs> Now, if you ask Scott what his company is all about, he'll tell you it's about spreading ideas and getting people to think about how to make their job better, how to do their job better. Yeah. <laughs> all right. But you look great. Oh, thanks. That sounds great. Not even talking about your ass. Can we get a shot of that? It's all about my ass. <laughs> now you can. She's swimming. It. Our goal is to stimulate thoughts and discussions, creativity and solutions, agreements and disagreements. But above all, we want to excite you. This is a great industry, and you picked a really good way to spend your life, because it's really fun. <laughs> Maybe you should try doing videos. Uh, <laughs> How did you first hear about Bar Smart? How did that? <laughs> From you, you idiot. <laughs> uh, you know, when you called me on the phone and said, I got this great idea I want to do. Um, basically, yeah, it was your us talking in the beginning was your incredible enthusiasm for this project that um, I was like, wow, it sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> but but uh, I mean, honestly, your enthusiasm didn't show any boundaries whatsoever, and I've always respected that. And uh, you've done a, a great amount of work with it, and I'm really impressed with it. I congratulate you on it. Thanks. Wow, well, a lot of people were involved. Thank you. Scott Young called me um, and said, I want to teach people how to do this. Uh, come on over and see what I got. And he had about three pages of full scat paper scribbled down and we just come up with a name. And uh, that's when I first heard about it. I know uh, in talking with him that uh, just prior to that, that his drive uh, and what he wanted to do and, and teach and touch other people with his knowledge, uh, here we are today. That's the first time I heard about it. I remember him calling me. I came over. I'm going to make a shameless pitch right here now for Scott's mom, okay? Uh, Scott is the most genuine person I've ever met in my life, and I know where he gets it from. His mom is so special. If you are emailing her, or emailing Scott, or faxing, or calling on the phone, that is genuine on the other end. She and Scott care so much about this company, and what Extreme Bar Attending by Bar Smart represent, it's just, it's a warming feeling to be around him. It's very nice. It's, uh, Mom, I love you. As communications director for Bar Smart, uh, what online questions are you uh, most asked about Scott or about his company? Or? Well, the two areas that I get the most questions in are, one, the area of fire tricks. Um, I've had questions from all over the world on how do you do the fire tricks, how do you do the backdraft, and of course I don't answer those questions online. I t send them to their magic shops or uh, to magicians in the area, but that's uh, something that we don't teach because of safety. The other area is how do you keep from spilling all that liquor in the bottles? Where, where are the pour spouts? What do you use? Um, and because I've had the opportunity to go to Scott seminars, and to judge competitions, and because I also have the chance to check with him, I'm able to answer those questions. What's like one of the funniest or even strangest uh, questions you've been asked? Okay, the very first question we got when we went online was, if I learn to do extreme bartending, will I get chicks? So I went to Scott and I said, do you really want me to answer this? And he said, yes. Well, there's a lot of different, um, just simple low-risk tricks on the videos that I didn't even know existed. And these things are something that you can go anywhere with and not having to worry about anybody thinking you're going to break something, you're going to break something. And uh, the best thing about the videos, I think, is fast forward, rewind, pause, play, practice. I can take this, I can take what Scotty's saying and not just think that I have to remember it all. I can rewind, I can hear what he's got to say again if I need to. If there's a trick that I like to do and rewind, I can do the trick and master the trick, actually. It's really, he's putting it out on, on video for everybody to learn, and it's an excellent thing. And fast forward, rewind, pause, play, practice. His videos were laid out so great. Like, you can, I think someone's commenting on it before, you can really, you can rewind it and just yeah. work on it. I mean, you don't see it, it's so fast, and it could be really risk-free. And then you, you start, you kind of slow it down, and you watch it, you break it up, and all of a sudden, you know, within 10 minutes, you're doing it. And it, it's so much easier than what it's it looks like. Than, yeah. And to the customer, it's like, wow, you know? So I think 
the videos are just, they're just, they've done big changes for me. You know, it's not way out there. It's just, you just gotta apply yourself and get right into it. So they're great, awesome videos. Uh, I saw a competition at Doc Marlins, which is extremely well run, high enter entertainment value. Um, just makes me want to be a part of it for a long time. What did you like about that particular one? Other than that particular one at Doc Marlins? At Doc Marlins? Uh, the organization, I believe. The format, it was high energy. Uh, the crowd was interactive. They seemed to enjoy everything about it. Um, and the people that ended up winning, I believe, should have won because they were the better bartenders that day. They were making drinks. They weren't just flipping empty bottles or anything. There was no spillage, they were accurate. It, it was what you deserve to see a bartender do. He wasn't in a circus, he was bartending. That's what you need. Well, I've been around uh, a long time, probably since some of the inception of uh, the whole flair uh, bartending uh, in town here. So I've had occasion to uh, witness a lot of competitions and uh, my the truth you can glean out of a competition is that show is a real, uh, um, a real positive thing to put on. You can have costumes, you can have smoke machines, but if you can't pour a shot or you can't uh, uh, actually bartend, it's not going to help you. I mean, if you've got a solid routine and you know uh, you're skilled, then you should enter. And if you're going to enter, you might as well uh, put a little bit of a hurrah on it. But uh, just being able to to juggle isn't enough. You got to uh, competition is an extension of your own personality, right? And you know, I'd go like go that way. I've been a judge at one and seen several, and uh, they're always in a format. But you, the people who excel are always the people that are are good at what they do, but like what they do. Yeah. The ones who don't do this and go flip, 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 flip. They go, and they look at you and go, ha, 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 I did that. <laughs> the ones that take it not too seriously but do it for the enjoyment of it, they always win. It just like, shines through, doesn't it? Absolutely. Um, I, was, I got to be a spill judge at one of the competitions, <laughs> and I had more fun, I think, than How half the How much did you spill? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I had more fun than most of the people there, I think, because they were so nervous. I, at one point, had a, a tablecloth wrapped around my head for this guy's routine, and he was like, you know, you threw me off a little bit there. I said, buddy, you, you can't be spilling so much booze on me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you look at these people, and the ones who do it, do it professionally, but do it and they love it. And that's what makes them win, their personal flair. Spe speaking of spillage, have you ever uh, been witness to Scott's game of Paint the Porter? <laughs> Involving a lot of juices, grenadine, and multicolored... Uh, I can't say that I've condiments. ever done that, Scott being such a professional, that uh, wouldn't do anything like that except with the uh, cheaper... It, it, it looks so like you've just hired a porter from a Jerry yeah. Garcia Grateful Dead concert. We don't uh, let them wear white anymore. <laughs> Safety first, I always Safety say. Safety first. I remember one time Trent was throwing someone out and I had a full tray and I was running. He was right behind me throwing this. I was running <laughs> so fast, dicked into the side booth. It was just like, whew, didn't spill a drop. <laughs> Um, I know you pretty well, so it's kind of a given this next question, but uh, for the people who don't know you, uh, are there any strange things that ever happened to you at work? Wow. Um, I would say that if there aren't strange things happening at work, uh, either I'm not there or uh, <laughs> it's Christmas Day, the one day of the year you know you're closed. <laughs> um, it, it's a real fluid industry. I mean, you can't pick and choose who's walking in your door, and uh, you can't pick and choose how they're going to react with people inside. So there's always going to be something interesting. If you're not paying attention, you're missing a lot of the, the good parts of it. Anything that you can think of off the top of your head? Well, I guess last week I had a fellow in uh, who looked like a perfectly uh, normal guy. And unbeknownst to me, I realized he was in an argument, heard him over my shoulder, looked back. There's nobody else there, right? But uh, he was tearing a strip off this chair like uh, nobody's business. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about... Uh strange, odd, bizarre things happen to you at work? Or connected to work? Constantly. Constantly. I remember uh, I was here no more than three months. I was working, uh, I was managing the bar, and I, it was a slow night, Tuesday night, and about uh, five or six girls were on the dance floor, and uh, I said to them, you know, ladies, you gotta calm down your dancing, because they were taking each other and throwing them into other girls dancing, and I said, you gotta stop. Well, honest to God, they turned around and they beat the crap out of me. <laughs> 
I've never seen any, uh, please, you have to leave. We don't have to do nothing. And it took seven of us, me and six doormen, to take five girls out of here because they were fighting so bad. I've never seen anything like it. It's the weirdest story I've ever seen in my life. I had bruises up the side of my head from one of them smacking me <laughs> and me looking at her going, you're serious. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it, so that's my screw-up story. You know, I, I, I've never heard anything like it. Oh, you didn't that's, know I got beat up by girls? No. Yeah, all the time. I always suspected, but... I... <laughs> High school, elementary school, the Roxy. Um, do you have any screw-up stories? Anything that's uh, gone on in your history that's been brutal? Ooh, no. <laughs> Not me. Not you, no. Um, Bart actually... Uh, when I was learning how to flip, and uh, when I was working at the Roxy, I uh, one day, walking by the table, I grabbed a Corona bottle, flipped it up in the air, missed it, I flipped it really high, and I was, it hit this guy in the head, and he's like, he goes, what was that, what was that? And all of his friends were looking around, and I looked at him, I go, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, and I walked away laughing my head off. Um, I just, one time I was uh, with Scott, I just finished taking his course and uh, he was at the bar that I work at, the Roxy, and I was busting tables and his girlfriend asked me for a glass of water. So it's Scott, right? I just came from his course, I'm all excited, I'm pumped, I know everything's going on, I watch the videos, it's all crazy. So I go out, run and get him a glass of water and I bring it back and I have the lime in my hands, ready to do the old around the back into the glass trick. It's simply, that's exactly how it goes. But with, I'm still a rookie, I'm all excited, I'm all nervous. It's Scott, he's watching me, I get, doing me a favor, getting, him, getting his girlfriend a glass of water. Anyways, I throw it up and I overthrow it. So I'm trying to catch it with the glass and pours it all over his girlfriend. One of my most embarrassing things, actually. Any concerning Scott, maybe? Any, any stories concerning Scott? Scott, uh, how about, um, yeah, okay, how about this? Scott's lid is uh, shorts on fire twice that I know of. Once he's burnt through two pairs of underwear at the same time, standing there with his shorts on fire. All happened because uh, of a drink he did called the back draft. Right. And uh, <laughs> um, yeah, actually I'm going to leave that there. Just imagine <laughs> Scott with his shorts on fire and uh, not even knowing it. Did How's that? Fire out? No, no. <laughs> no. No, I left it. It was quite... That's not what happened. <laughs> Oh. He'll tell it in his own words. If you ask Scott about his company and what it's all about, he will tell you it's about spreading ideas. That's too many abouts. That was three abouts in one sentence. That's too many. <laughs> Our goal is to create stimulation. One more time. Afternoon. Morning. How you doing? Excellent. Morning for you, afternoon for me. Um, well, it's going to be pretty informal, but a uh, few questions. Uh, first of all, what, uh, what drew you to the bartending thing in the beginning? What started it? Yeah, good question. Uh, I was actually in college and not doing as well as I should have been. And uh, I guess it, the bartending had always interested me. So uh, I ended up dropping out of college and taking a bartending class. And uh, that didn't go over well with, with mom, but... I was going to say, some people can construe that as sort of a mistake but yeah I, you know positive negative first of all I mean I'm not I'm not saying that you should drop out of college anything any learning is good how old were you I was 19 right yeah I guess uh, yeah just 19 and you know I just figured if I wasn't going to be putting an effort in and doing as well as I could then you know I should be doing something that, that I would be doing well focusing on something that you yeah. enjoyed so I took it out I, I, I dropped out I went to the sports tuning school and, and sort of went from there what kind of what kind of training did you get? Did you? Uh, I went to a, a place called actually Fine Art Bartending, and it was you know a really good standard course. It ta taught me you know 100 different drink recipes and the difference between rice and scotches and wines. The, the, the basic rules of yeah, just the basic stuff. And and I know people have oftentimes have a, a sort of a negative idea about bartending schools, and there's a range of them. Some are some are good and some are really below par. There is a base amount of information. Exactly. I think we're. I'm always looking at the bigger picture. I think that if you look at a school and you think it's the be all end all and if they guarantee you something, well then they're lying. Right. right. And that's never the way I looked at it. I looked at it as information. I want to learn, I want to be better. So I took it that as a first step, not as a exactly. be all end all. Um, now, you came through this simple, basic school. What uh, brought you into flare bartending? How'd you, what, what, what turned that corner for you? You know, I just wanted to make more money. 
plain and simple. Uh, I wanted to work at the top spots, and I noticed at the time I, I really looked up to uh, Andy and Sasha, uh, who were, you know, I mentioned a few times. Is, is that where you got the inspiration for it? The yeah, it really the, was. The, the Co cocktail was out. The move cocktail. Right. Cocktails, we all know about that. Uh, and there was just this bar, the Roxy. It was the busiest place in town. Everybody wanted to work there, and uh, and these two guys. I went in and I watched them, and you know they had some real, they had some real style, some real skills, and, and class. You know they treated everybody really well and you know they did the tricks but you know they didn't spill didn't take forever to make the drink and they just had it all together in a full package I went, wow I want to be able to do that so it was moving so fast that I couldn't learn it um, but eventually I ended up going and, and and trying to learn on my own. You discovered it through the movie cocktail a little bit but more closer to but closer to home was through seeing these competitions? Yeah well competitions and, and just these two guys that were I don't, hopefully nobody misquotes me, but these, these guys are my gods. These are the guys that I really looked up to and I had total respect for and I wanted to be them. And uh, I went out and, and actually took a bartending, an advanced bartending course that was there. Uh, interestingly enough that they sort of had the chance at being me and my company before I came around, but right. they taught me three different moves. Two of them were wrong, like the way that, to do them. They're much more difficult that way. And uh, I paid $425. <laughs> Excuse me, and uh, you know it really wasn't. There wasn't much to learn. He, he, he was a lot of style, uh, but no substance. They they didn't really have any structure. So I thought, well, you know, I want to learn how to do this. So I went out and I and I, I picked a partner and I uh, you know, set up my backyard, big bar, and you know I flipped you know all day. And my partner came over at the end of the day and I taught him what I learned. And, um, at the end of that six week period, we entered a contest and uh, actually competed against Andy and Sasha. And I knew I was going to get killed, but. You know, I wanted, to, I wanted to show my skills, uh, and I ended up getting scouted, came in third in the city after, after three or six weeks of flipping, uh, and that was the beginning of, you know, sort of my Now, race. that was something that you were pretty much self-taught. You obviously had this school that started you in the direction, but right. pretty much you went on your own from there. Yeah. Well, let's get the first things uh, first. Is, is I don't create this style of bartending, no, not, not at all. Um, we're just seeing that the sliver of it, the, just the tip of the iceberg of what we're seeing now. But yeah, I, I went out and I, I saw some basic things and I thought, well, where can I take this? How, how much further can I, can, I, can I take this? Or where can I go from here? Uh, and, and just adding the fun factor, you know, really enjoying what I did and trying to connect with the people, that's the biggest thing. How long did it take for you to, uh, you know, become what you would call accomplished at it? Say you, you were a respectable level of performance to go and show this to people. And yeah, um, without any joking, I mean, I'll let you know when I get there. Um, I think that there's so much more to learn, and I think if you're if you're figured, hey, I'm done, you know, then you got the wrong attitude. Um, like some of these kids that, that I'm teaching now, and they're, you know, I'm getting emails from all over the world, from Turkey and Kenya and Singapore and Australia and all these places, and thank you, keep them coming. It's it's great. Um, I mean, you guys are making me a dinosaur. I love that. You know, I mean, we're just scratching the surface. I'm, you know, I just want to be a teacher, spreading ideas. And that's, so that's a nice thing. That obviously was the impetus for you starting. Bar smart as bringing that idea together. Yeah, people wanted to know how, how to do it, and uh, you know, I, I created some sort of a reputation for my skill, I suppose. And, and I decided, well, if I'm going to do it, I want to do it for myself, and I want to really teach people. So I went out there, and and I, you know, I I've never been a fan of of teachers or instructors who have said, okay, we'll do this, and they just go, you know, whatever. They show you something extremely complicated, whether it's this or skiing or snowboarding or surfing, whatever. And you, the student's going to look at that and go, uh, I can't do that. I can't do that. There's no way. Where do I start? Well, that's the thing. I've, I've never been ab about the ego in the sense that I don't care if you think I'm the best bartender in the world. I want to make you to be. All right, so I want to show you step one. No, I'm not going to start at step 57. I mean, that's just ridiculous. That's just an ego trip for the instructor. Right? I want you to really learn. Fair enough. Um, where'd you get the name Bar Smart? Um, actually, Vance Campbell, who I have mentioned earlier in some of these videos, uh, was the guy who brought me into the Roxy, and uh, one of the smartest men in, in this industry that I know. Uh, I, I was having trouble getting a name uh, for, you know, for the company, and I called him, and uh, actually he had this name. It was, uh, it was there for a while. I didn't really know what to do with it, um, but I called him from, uh, like I was in Calgary at the time, and I called him in Vancouver, and he said, well, what about Bar Smart? I went, I like it. That was a nice ring to It's a good beginning. What, what was your... Uh like the initial concept, what was your, the impetus for it, the idea initially? Uh, just I wanted to teach people how to have more fun behind the bar. 
you know, be entertaining. Again, it's all our main, our main things. Uh, without spilling, without slowing down to make a drink, you know, without having the attitude. You know, fun is great, but, you know, let's play together. What, uh, have you changed that? Is it, I mean, you've been doing this for a while now. Is, is that idea changed at all? Is it morphed into anything? Uh, you know, I think that that's, that's the basis of it, and I think it's, it's spread more to just to sharing ideas. Um, I speak a lot at, at trade shows and, and conventions, and uh, as you hopefully you're going to see from these videos, is that we don't, we're not taking the attitude of, you know, we're right and you're wrong, listen to us. That's, that's not what it's about. It's about let's talk about what works for you. So I think if anything, we've, we've sort of expanded upon that idea that, uh, you know, we want to we share these ideas and we, so we can all do better. So you're not actually... Uh Sorry. You're not changing uh, bartending in particular, just the attitude that goes with it as much as the style that it's done in. Yeah, I think, I mean, the attitude is, is really the main thing. That There's so many bartenders out there who seem to forget that it's, it's about, it's my privilege to be able to serve you as a customer. There's, there's so many different places you can choose that when you come into the bar, I'd better be the best bartender that you've ever seen. Do you yeah. see that developing further as you know we're in a new century now? Yeah, I do. I see it as a trend because there's so much competition that the people who don't do that are falling by the wayside. Um, I mentioned a couple of names. I mean, anybody been to Disneyland? Well, it's the happiest place on earth. You know, you go there, and <laughs> it's you know people are are genuinely happy to serve you. I mean, they're hey welcome. I mean, that's a great experience, a great feeling. That's what I want to give. I want people to feel like you're in my living room. Hey, welcome to my home. You know, how can we make you happy? Professional yet homey. It's you know, well, Sasha, is, we keep mentioning him, but you know, clean bar is a happy bar and treat people like it's your home party. Well, that's what I try to do. A happy bar being a place you'll go back to time and time again. I think so. I mean, if you walk into a place and uh, you can't help but have a smile on your face just because of the people around you. Yeah, it really it's infectious. And if you learn one thing out of anything that we talk about, just, just smile more, you know. Um, now you've obviously had some people who've uh, influenced you over the time. Any any particular people who've influenced you to you know channel you to the direction you're in today? Like, yeah, uh, as I mentioned, Andy and Sasha earlier, um, just they were the full package, and I can see that it really is possible to do this style of bartending, you know, professionally and use it as a tool. Um, there's you, um, you know, you were the first bartender that I worked with, you know, in the Roxy, and and I mean, other than just being hilarious because you're nuts. Uh, you know, you, you, you take care of people. There, there's uh, nothing better than having the freedom to be nuts. Exactly. And that's the big thing that I learned actually from you and, and uh, well, Chris Simone is like this now in the, my later <laughs> time. But I think the more that, that you let your own personality out, uh, I think the better. Just you're being pure, you're being clean. It's just, it's happening naturally. Um, I learned a lot from Gregor as well. Uh, we both work with him, Gregor. Uh, and, uh, you know, just being nice to the people. It doesn't matter whether you flip a bottle or not. You know, you never really did a whole lot although you're much better than you think. Um, and I never had to worry about throwing things to you because you're always going to catch it. But, uh, or, you know, or, just or, or at least take a good hit. <laughs> take it. Well, I always respect it that. It bounced off my hand. I almost had it, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, now, is there anyone in particular who's been the strongest role model? Hmm. I mean, lots of people have influenced you, but is there someone, say, outside of the industry who yeah. is a model in your attitudes? I've always looked at people who had a great work ethic. Um, and I... I mentioned, I got a couple quotes at the end uh, of these videos, uh, but Michael Jordan and Wayne Gretzky, uh, because you know they worked hard. Like Michael Jordan, you know he got cut from a softball sophomore basketball team. You know he wasn't good enough, and that pissed him off. Yeah. And I liked that. You know I've had that sort of experience. An before. internal belief. Being exactly. Then he went back and he said, you know what? That's the last time they're ever going to cut me, and that was the last time that ever happened. He worked his butt off, and it was a force of will. And that's what I take out of that. Same with the Wayne Gretzky. You know. Uh, you know, I've, I've had the pleasure to serve him occasionally. And, you know, real classy guy, which is a big thing, too. Skill is great, but just because you're, you know, at the top of your industry doesn't mean you have to be, you know, and have an attitude about it. Um, but Wayne Gretzky, you know, he always, uh, he worked harder than anybody. And I like that, the work ethic. Talent's great, skills are great, but, you know, what are you doing every day? Are you getting up tomorrow and doing something, baby steps? What are you doing the next day? Are you doing anything about your passion? Or anything to make it happen. There's so many people who have all sorts of talent, but you know what do they do really? If you take a look at that, I think that you're gonna you're gonna realize that we could do more. Um, I think unfulfilled potential is one of the biggest cliches of our time. Yeah, and you know what? I'm I'm a, a victim of that. 
uh, I used to play a lot of baseball when I was younger, and I thought that's what I was going to do. I got scouted a little bit, had a couple tryouts, but you know, if I look back on that, and I do once in a while, I think I really didn't put enough effort into it. There was a time when I had a window of opportunity, and I didn't seize the day. You know, I didn't step up to the plate and, and do something every day. And I look at people like this all the time that have all sorts of potential. You know, but what are you doing today to do that? If that's your passion, that's your dream. What are the baby steps that you're taking today and tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that? You know, what are you really doing? I think, I think we're really lazy sometimes, and I find that in myself sometimes. What is your, uh, what is your philosophy of a, a good, strong business, something that you feel proud of? Quality. Quality and reputation, I think. Um, a number of years ago, I wrote a, uh, something that's called a new beginning for our company when I, I reinvested and went after the bigger goals. I went and wrote, I wrote the book, I wrote the first series of videos, and I went out there and I, and I produced them. Uh, and I wanted to let the world know that, that we existed. And it started out by saying, we want to th- we want to say what we do, do what we say, do it better than anybody, and not have, to have an attitude about it. Yeah. And enjoy life, because you never know when we could get hit by that bus. But that idea of quality, you know, that's what I want. People yeah. to walk away thinking that's the best money I've ever spent. Basically, you want something you can be proud of. Do you have pride in what is, do you have a moment where you're just really proud of what you've put together here? You know, every day when I get the emails from all around the world, um, you know, money's great and I want to make a living so I can go, you know, surfing and golfing and, and that's, you know, thank you. Um, but what's really nice is that you get, you know, comments from people like that, you've helped me, you've changed my life, you just gave me an idea that I, I clicked with and, you know, I ran with and it's, it's made my life better. That kind of stuff is the best. Now, I've taken a few other courses. Why is yours so much different? Why, why does yours instill a sense of pride, and why does it overflow with an enthusiasm like yours does? I know. I hope. I hope um, that just the passion comes through. You know, I'm a bartender. I love doing what I do. I like dealing with people, talking about customer service, and uh, it's just it, it's a love of the game, if you will. And if I can instill that into somebody, well, then they're going to do great. You know, but it's just you know, work hard, and enjoy what you're doing. It's also a way to overcome. I mean, lots of people have that stigma attached to bartender. Oh, it's, oh, you're a bartender. Obviously, that's not a bad thing, but some people have that in their minds. Right. What do you say to people who have that you know, worry or feel inferior because of that? Yeah. Um, you know, I just don't worry about it. I go and do the best that I can every day. You know, I would enjoy, like, this breath. That's, I mean, wow, this is great. This sense of talking to you and having this interview, talking, thinking about the ideas that you're bringing up. And I'm a bartender, yeah, absolutely. I love it. I get to deal with people and get to meet people from all over the world. And uh, I mean, how many jobs do you know that people come in and give you money and thank you for it? You know, it's, it's kind of nice. It's a wonderful thing. Now, you've been doing this for a while. I know you're all flash and <laughs> I've worked with you for a long time and I know how good you are. But let's get to something a little more embarrassing. <laughs> What's your most embarrassing moment? Now, I don't want you to you know, bring it down to one particular moment, because I know there's been a few. There's, there's been a but, few. But uh, you know, something that sticks out Somebody that you learned a drink, from. drink, please? Uh, I think that, really, I mean, I've had, I've had more screw-ups than you know, any of you guys are going to. Um, I told a couple in the last series of videos. Um, something happened the other day. Uh, I had a, a big group of people from a bar who I, I trained many of their staff. And they all came in. There's like ten of them, and I was making a, you know, a, sh- a round of shooters for them, a pyramid. And you know, I was pouring them. I was all looking very nice, and you know, boom, topple. They all fell down. And obviously, I I wanted to be better than the next person. I wanted, especially for these people who are expecting me to be good, because I'm supposed to know what I'm talking about. And you know, right away, he just goes, Ugh. well. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna what are you gonna do? You know, I had like a yeah. tiny little bit of a shooter that was well, left and one way to put it is if you don't reach for the stars, at least you know, you won't come up with a sure. handful of you're, mud. You're gonna you're gonna screw up and it's gonna happen. Now, flip side of that, uh, a most difficult or stressful situation that you know you've been thrust into as a bartender and you know, how do you handle it? Hmm. Well, first thing on problem situations, I like those situations. I like it as a challenge. I enjoy it. You know, something's, something's happening in the bar that another bartender may not want to deal with, and let me in, because that's fun. Right? Because I know there's nothing that this person's going to do to piss me off, that I'm just going to show. I'm going to handle that well, and I'm going to make that person walk away thinking that, wow, we love these people. 
right? I always look for the negative situations and try to turn them into a positive. So I love those kind of things. You know, your parents always told you not to let people push your buttons. Well, it's the same thing. You know, there's nothing that's going to happen that, that you're going to be able to do as a customer to upset me. I'm going to take that negative and I'm going to rebound in a positive manner. Not a used car salesman positive, but you know, I'm going to really listen. I'm going to take the time to listen to your problem and, and to fix it and to make you happy. Um, I, I enjoyed you in those situations. And if you've armed yourself with all the proper skills to A, cover it from a technical standpoint, and B, the actual concern and caring, yeah. There shouldn't be a problem you can't handle. And I, th I think humility also, just admit that you're wrong if you are. That's a huge thing that, that, that I'll do. I have no problem admitting that I'm wrong. You know, I was horrible this service and I, I screwed up your drinks and, you know, ugh, I'm not accepting a tip this round. I, I really apologize. Come back next time and we'll, we'll try harder. I was wrong once, but it wasn't my fault. <laughs> <laughs> no. But then again, okay, on the flip side of that, funniest moments? Any uh, particular? Funniest moments. Uh, I really enjoy getting students that I've trained back behind the bar. Um, they'll order a drinks around with their friends and I'll bring them to the side of the bar. Come here. And they're like, what, what? And I'll <laughs> you. <laughs> thrust them into the spotlight. And I go, throw it in the air! Throw it in the air! Uh, and I usually go around the side of the bar and you know, get their friends to chant and all of a sudden they're just, you know, they're walking away thinking, wow, I was behind the bar, you know, with Scott. And, you know, it just, it's great. I mean, it's such a little thing that I can do uh, to make someone's night and, and you know, I love those moments. Well, you're training a lot of these people. What's, uh, what's the mo most asked question from you? Most asked question? Um, I don't know if there is anyone. Skip it. Um, as a bartender and you know, entrepreneur with your own company, providing this, uh, these tapes and, and these videos, um, what's been your greatest challenges and, and what kind of feedback have you had, what kind of rewards have you had that, mm. that for, are fulfilling for you? I think the biggest challenge uh, is, is the global one in the sense that the style of bartending is still really very new. Uh, and a lot of bar managers or owners out there uh, have a very limited way of looking at it. And I really enjoy skeptical people, whether they're at the bar or whether we go in and talk to them about training their staff uh, or they come into our seminars because I think that if you give me a fair shake you're gonna admit that I'm right because we're talking about a way of dealing with people right? and that everything that we do focuses on taking care of the customer and there's all sorts of ways to do that um, I think that, that we win and we're right because we're open to everything it's not just a one way to do it so I like getting the people who think uh, very narrow-mindedly, and uh, they realize the fact that, you know, we're not taking the attitude that we're right and you're wrong. Uh, we don't have an adversarial uh, attitude. So right away, when people come in and, and listen to us or talk to us, uh, we change them around a little bit. And all of a sudden, they're like, hey, maybe there are some new possibilities I haven't considered yet. An openness to anyone's situation that you can affect by just a positive attitude yeah. and uh, yeah. an enthusiasm. I, I just think we can be better. We can do better. All of us, every day. Speaking of doing better, uh, you put on a lot of these competitions and you judge them. What are you going to tell other bartenders? What should they do or what things should they um, accent in their performances or their preparation right. for Good these question. competitions? Um, first of all, there's all sorts of different kinds of competitions that are out there. And uh, check out our website. We'll give you information on, on a lot of them. Um, we have a certain style of competition. It's, it's working flair. You know, I want to see what you can do behind the bar, making your drinks and being entertaining while you're doing it not just juggling empty bottles and if you happen to have a drink at the end well that's okay that's not what we're looking for right because my goal is to have a bar manager who's going to walk in and see this competition and walk out going you know I can see that bartender behind my bar definitely doing exactly what he's doing I can see him doing that unfortunately there's some competitions out there that are really more focused on the you know standing back there for a minute and a half juggling three empty bottles and then putting them away and, and thinking that's bartending so um, I have a challenge with that. Um, having said that, it's really, over time, it's, it's progressing towards more professionalism, so I like that. Um, where, where do you see BarSmart going in the future? What, what changes are you going to implement? Good question. Um, we've got these new series of videos out. Uh, my book is on the way. Um, we've got some other uh, products like Starter Kid, and uh, like we're selling the, the Flare Practice bottles as well. Um, but mainly, I just want to continue spreading the idea that we can be better at what we do. And there's all sorts of ways to do that. But let's think about it. And let's care enough 
to think about what we're doing. Say world domination? Is that <laughs> in your plans? Oh, I don't know. I want to want to surf more. I want to play some more golf. Definitely uh, meet some more interesting people. There's a big world out there, and I think surprisingly to me, a lot of people have never uh, heard of this attitude before. Um, you know, it's not rocket science, and I didn't create it. Uh, we're just, you know, mom told me to take care of the people, and that's what we're trying to do. You know, we're trying to spread that attitude. But without the used car salesman attitude, you can be nice people, be friendly, be happy, um, without being cheesy. If you enjoy where you're at, I think if you enjoy what you're doing, and you enjoy that person, every single person you got to reset for. Hey, how are you doing? My name's Scott. Welcome to Roxy. That's important. If you can do that, you're miles ahead of the game. Now, have you ever been at a loss for words? Someone come to the bar, someone in a business meeting, anything. Have you ever been at a loss for words? Just once? Um, a girl uh, one, one time came in and wanted a kiss. and uh, I'd had a girlfriend at the time. and uh, I just said, you know, you're beautiful, but I, I can't kiss you. And um, she proceeded to get more and more upset. And at one point, I was sort of leaning on the bar talking to somebody. And as you know, you bug me about this, Scotty sense is tingling. Um, at times in my life, sometimes I've just gone, something's wrong and I've ducked, or I've moved, or I've put my hand out or something. And Scotty sense of tingling, I ducked, and a full jug of lemons <laughs> came over my head and, uh, and under the wall. And then she went for a beer bottle. Um, that, <laughs> you know, what do you, you know, dormant? <laughs> yeah. Of course, at that point, I was hiding behind the porter. Yeah, fair enough. Again, safety first being Safety our first, yeah, and that's why he gets the big bucks. Fair enough. As you've had the opportunity to watch Scott develop as an extreme uh, bartender over the many years that he's been doing, what advice do you have for uh, someone that's just beginning? Well, first of all, don't practice in your mother's living room. Yeah. Uh, things like Dal Royal Dalton figurines and windows can be broken and have in the past. And if you've seen the first four videos, you've heard some of the stories. Yeah. Um, but the second thing that I would say is be persistent. Don't expect to develop polish in five minutes. If you do a little bit every day and you're persistent, we have students that have proven that to us in a very short time. They've ended up excelling. Any, uh, any general observations you have for the, for the industry as a whole that you'd, uh, yeah. you know, any changes you'd like to see or, or things that you think could be implemented? I think I'd want to make one, one point is just don't abuse your power. I see this happening a lot, and just because you know, you're behind the wood or you're, you know, you're being a waitress or whatever, people want to be your friend. That's sort of the industry that we're in. And I see a lot of people abusing that, uh, taking advantage of, of, say, somebody who is maybe not as strong or not as slick or not a, as good a communicator as you are. Um, not everybody is going to be, uh, you know, say the right thing at the right time. And I think that if we could just give someone a break, you know, you don't start, start, you don't start the arms race. Um, people are going to say dumb stuff to you. You know, oh, you think you're Tom Cruise. Well, you know, like I've never heard that before, but you know, I have a choice. I can react in a negative way, or I can go, oh, you know, that movie with the, that movie with the Jets. I cried when Goose died. What can I get you? You know, you take a positive. Right? That, that's a big thing. Um, but main thing, just, you know, just, just have fun on what you're doing. One thing I got to say about Scott, Ever since the first time I met him uh, through my uncle in the Roxy, he was already, you know, trying to teach me. I just met him, shook his hand, and he had me behind the bar, and he was trying to teach me how to, you know, snap bottle caps off with, the, with your bottle burn. And I think, you know, when there's people like that out there in the industry, you got to take advantage. You know, like, just sponge it all up. And uh, I think with Scott, uh, all I can really say is, you know, thanks. He's a great guy. He's kind of, he's really got me started. Just appreciation. Uh, I'm just glad that, you know, I made the right decisions coming back from school to get into this industry and to meet up with them as early as I did. I mean, I'm really young in this game and there's just so much, you know, to move forward with. And uh, without him, it, you know, like he always says, when he was my age and getting into it, there was nothing there for him. And now he's created that for people like us, which just makes it, you know, awesome. Just really awesome. But other than the... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, over the other videos you're the talking video, about. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, aside from from the uh, porno. Right. Well, the section. other videos. Um, I'm really surprised at at how well that they've sold uh, all around the world because I made them for me. You know, I made them because I had some ideas and I wanted to I wanted to really teach people how to how to do this style and I wanted to start out with the most basic things, the most easiest, no risk things. And uh, you know, I'm really happy with the way things have gone, but. You know, my whole philosophy of when we were filming it is that I really didn't care whether we sold six copies or not. 
You know, I wanted it to be great. I wanted it to be good enough that it would be current, you know, and useful 50 years from now. Um, that was my first goal. My second goal is I wanted it to, to show that, hey, we're just bartenders. We're having fun. It's okay to be a little crazy. It's okay to be, you know, to not be perfect and have your hair mess, messed and whatever. Uh, you know, have fun at what you're doing. And I hope that really came through. And also make it worldwide. I mean, it's amazing how it applies no matter where you are in the world. Well, I mean... I mean, there's always a market for good service. People want to be treated well, period, plain and simple. And that's the basis of what this company is all about. We get a reputation, certainly, for the flipping, and that's how we get all the press, but you know, it's, it's the least important thing. It's the most visible thing. You, you get know. your reputation for the flipping, was it? <laughs> the flipping, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no more, uh, yeah, flipping. Uh, what countries do you most hear from online? This is exciting. We have a tracker online so that I see monthly who we've um, had responses from. We're hearing, of course, a lot from North America, U.S. and Canada, but we're hearing a lot from Singapore, uh, Japan, Australia, I believe, is the next largest uh, number of uh, hits we have on our site, the Netherlands, and then we have some really obscure places. We've heard from Bahrain, Bosnia, um, uh, Botswana, every, every continent. Um, countries all over the world. That pretty much wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as we enjoyed making it. Be sure to check out our website. We've got lots of new stuff going up all the time. And if you like what we do, tell your friends about us. We'd really appreciate it. Also, make sure you check out the ads at the end of the video. These are some great companies and they can really help you if you give them a chance. So call them and find out for yourself. I'd like to leave you with three of my favorite quotes and a few thoughts. Abraham Lincoln said, I don't think much about a man who doesn't know more tomorrow than he did today. Michael Jordan said, I can accept failure. Everybody fails sometimes, but I can't accept not trying. And Wayne Gretzky said, I miss 100% of the shots that I don't take. So bottom line, care enough about what you do to think about how to do it better. And be proactive. Go out there and make something happen in your life. But above all, enjoy your life, because you never know how long you've got. Who wants to play golf? Smart now brings you a sensational six-week program. You'll learn everything you need to know about serving drinks with style. <laughs> with step-by-step -step and slow motion instruction, you'll learn easily, quickly and properly, so you won't spool the profits or break everything in sight. This is a business, and great bartenders do more than just take orders. So create excitement and increase your sales revenue with the Extreme Bartending Video Training Series. Our three videos with over 240 moves in all is a must for bartenders everywhere. No matter what level of bartender you are now, if you follow our program you'll increase your odds for success because you'll make an impact on every customer you ever serve. Think about it, if you don't entertain your customers, someone else will. Because in this highly competitive industry, you can't just expect high sales and big tips. You've got to earn them. So you can have a lot of fun with it. 
You can make more money for your bar, make more money for yourself. And if you do it properly, it's a win-win-win situation for everybody. gives a little spark to people's lives. I think the world's starving for entertainment. Cocktail the movie. That was great. It was a really good beginning. But, uh, that was 1988. Hopefully by now we've taken it further. Look out! My man.